The experiment, performed in 2022, also revealed a never-before-seen phenomenon, the work is exquisitely beautiful, says physicist Peter Norris of the University of Oxford. Norris, who was not involved with the research, compares the achievement to conducting a world-class orchestra, different elements of the experiment had to be meticulously coordinated and precisely timed. Scientists also discovered a long-predicted heating effect that could expose the physics of other violent environments, such as exploding stars called supernovas. People say, physics is, a dry subject, Norrie says. But I always think that physics is at the very forefront of creativity, fusion, the same process that takes place in the sun, is an appealing energy source. Fusion power plants wouldn't emit greenhouse gases. And unlike current nuclear fission power plants, which split atomic nuclei to produce energy, nuclear fusion plants wouldn't produce dangerous, long-lived radioactive waste. Ignition is the first step toward harnessing such power. Generating fusion requires extreme pressures and temperatures. In the experiment, the lasers at LLNL's National Ignition Facility pelted the inside of a hollow cylinder, called a hole round, which is about the size of a pencil eraser. The blast heated the whole round to a sizzling 3 million degrees Celsius, so hot that it emitted X-rays. Inside this X-ray oven, a diamond capsule contained the fuel, two heavy varieties of hydrogen called deuterium and tritium. The radiation vaporized the capsule's diamond shell, triggering the fuel to implode at speeds of around 400 kilometers per second, forming the hot, dense conditions that spark fusion dot that's particularly challenging because of the mishmash of electrically charged particles, or plasma, that fills the whole realm during the laser blast. This plasma can absorb the laser beams before they reach the walls of the whole realm, messing with the implosion symmetry. To even things out, Critcher and colleagues slightly altered the wavelengths of the laser beams in a way that allowed them to transfer energy from one beam to another. The fix required tweaking the beam's wavelengths by mere angstroms, tenths of a billionth of a meter. Engineering-wise, that's amazing they could do that, says physicist Caroline Carant of the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor, who was not involved with the work. What's more, these tiny, tiny tweaks make such a phenomenal difference.